Two dimensional, two dimensional collisions. Two dimensional collisions. Long pack, can I ask you to get started? Jimmy, no more beatboxing in the back of the class. All right, if we're talking about two-dimensional collisions, it probably wouldn't surprise you too much if I were to tell you that two-dimensional collisions allow for conservation of momentum as well, just like the one-dimensional collisions that we did previously. And so you might say that P, well, we just say P equals P prime. Nothing too big about that. But if I want to split it into X and Y components, It might be nicer to write it like this. In the x direction, momentum is conserved. And then I suppose you might say that in the y direction, momentum is conserved. But let's write it out for the x momentum. So ma times va in the x direction plus mass b times velocity initial b in the x direction is equal to the prime version of that, the after version. You can see that you really got to do a lot of bookkeeping here with the subscripts. Because I've got VBX and I got VBX primed. It starts to get to be a lot to keep track of. But there are all ways to tell certain things. Like VB indicates that it's the velocity for object B. X indicates the direction of that velocity. And primed indicates that it's happening after a collision has occurred. Yep. Oh, if they break down afterwards? Like if it's a, a collision that also involves <coughs> an explosion or something like that? Yeah. Momentum should be conserved, but it does get more complicated to write out the math. And, and I'm not going to do that to you at this level. We're just going to rest on the two-dimensional scenario where the number of objects before is equal to the number of objects afterwards. Okay, So I'm not, gonna, like, I'm, not, I'm not out to get you. We're just trying to work out some basic principles for analysis. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Does it say split x, y? Yeah, split the x, y components. And in the y direction, like you might expect, momentum in the y direction before is going to be equal to the sum of all the momentums in the y direction after the interaction. So exactly the same format, but it's worth writing it out for mass A and for mass B. Okay, and if you wanted to put a magical rectangle around any of this stuff, well, I suppose you could just put it around these little ones here, but maybe that wouldn't outline it well enough for you. I would probably put it around the big ones, although they mean the same thing. Just saying that in the x direction, momentum is conserved, and in the y direction, momentum is conserved. Don't try to do the x and y's together, because they're off funny angles maybe sometimes, right? That's hard to deal with the funny angles, and you know that from projectile motion. You're better off just dealing with the x's and the y's separately, just like when we did in two-dimensional projectile motion. It's just simpler at the end of the day. Okay. Um, I should make a, a note. If the collision is elastic, or I could say perfectly elastic. We could also use energy equations. We could also use energy conservation. And if I wanted to use energy conservation, what would the energy conservation equation look like? Would it look any different than in just the x component, or in, in just one dimensional? Think about it. Is, en is kinetic energy a scalar or a vector? So does the direction even matter? Does it matter that it's two dimensions? Uh, well, let's write out the equation anyway. We could say that 
ek is equal to ek prime. This is for an elastic, oh, sorry, ek, what the heck? I said ek prime and I said ky, that's crazy. Can't even claim that's dyslexia, that's crazy. All right, ek prime, one half ma va squared plus one half mb vb squared equals one half and the prime version. And if you like, it's actually kind of sweet because it generates for us a system of three equations, one, two, and three, that could be used together to solve the same problem. You could also recognize that even though this is VA primed, and you might look at this and say, ah, I can see there's no actual VA primed up here. I have VA X primed and VA Y primed. Don't forget, it's totally valid to recognize that VA X primed may be equal to VA primed cosine of the angle at which VA prime goes off at. So really, within, embedded within that equation is the same VA prime that's here. It just happens to also be a theta value. You call it theta A if you like, or something like that. But why you don't? You need to know on the picture. I'm saying so. Some, something like this expression might be embedded in there. Whether it's a cos theta or a sine theta depends on the angle that you know and you know your actual drawing or your image at the end of the day. But it's good to see that there's an embedded VA prime there. So they really are the same variables that they're all based on, just that this one has an, an angle associated with it. <coughs>